Our peaceful trading partners are not our enemies. They are our allies. We should beware of the demagogues who are ready to declare a trade war against our friends, weakening our economy, our national security, and the entire free world, all while cynically waving the American flag. Now, China's paying us right now billions and billions of dollars of tariffs a month. Every month, billions of dollars. I love it, personally. I love it. But they're paying billions of dollars, and it's hurting them. It's not good for them. Almost hard to believe that Reagan and Donald Trump held the same office, and even harder to believe they're members of the same party. Ronald Reagan is, of course, the patron saint of the modern Republican Party. You'll hear Reagan's name well, pretty much on the hour, every hour, at any Republican convention you go to, let alone any national debate. Which begs the question, how can the GOP identify with both Reagan and Trump at the same time? And not just on trade policy. Reagan, he called the Soviets the evil empire. He challenged them so much, it led to the fall of the Berlin Wall. You know the story of Trump and Vladimir Putin. I don't have to bore you with this. Um, we don't have to rehash the bromance. Reagan... He apologized to Japanese Americans who were interned during World War II. I always respected him for that. Trump, well, never apologized to anyone, even a disabled reporter obviously he mocked, then of course denied he did it, even though it was on live television at the time for all to see. And there are too many other things to count. But Reagan, he hated deficits. He actually raised taxes to try to offset them. Trump, he cut taxes, exploded the deficit, and sees no harm. Even their styles, completely oppositional. Reagan was, well, Reagan, smiling, happy, optimistic, shining city on the hill. Trump is, well, Trump, never seemingly happy unless talking about himself in the third person or mocking someone else. He's pessimistic to a, to a degree I haven't seen in the Oval, and he spoke of ending the American carnage during his inauguration speech, not exactly inspiring. I want to bring in right now a uh, guest, former congressman, good friend to the program, Chris Shays. He was a Republican for Connecticut and the office uh, for the final year and a half of Reagan's presidency, and Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. Um, there was a lot Whoever of... Whoever yeah. wrote your introduction deserves extra pay, because that is damn I, I good. I think his head is swelling at the moment. Yes. You're here. Yes. Right? All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, God. I can't let these two talk before the show anymore. Uh, but, you know, think about it, Chris. Go back to when you got to Washington and then when you left. Because, to be fair, sure, things are unrecognizable since Trump got here, but the Tea Party preceded him. The party is so different from the one that you joined yeah. when you I would have edited the first comment when it's almost hard to believe. Almost is a strong, is a weak word. It is totally impossible to believe what's happened. They are like opposites. I mean, and if you it, closed your eyes and you heard Trump talking about a trade war, right, you would have sworn you were thinking about a Democrat or oh, somebody. No, no, he was a Democrat. I mean, that's where he was coming from. But here's the question. The party's gone along. I mean, yeah. the idea that after Helsinki, I mean, it was embarrassing as an American forgetting your politics when he's basically doing everything he could to grovel to Putin. And then I think of <laughs> Reagan, right? My God, tear down the... I mean, the idea yeah. that Reagan, you know, and the miracle of ice some and everything, there'll it's be just, an explanation. My, mine right now but is... But the party was quiet, is my point. Yeah, but there, there'll be an explanation for the absurdity of what's happening with my own party. I think part of it is that they got people to hate Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton so much that whoever was the enemy or the opponent of Clinton was their hero. And once they're their hero, then it's hard to back off. There was one other similarity between the two of them that I didn't include, whoever wrote it didn't include the setup, mm. uh, that in 76, when Reagan first ran for the White House, he was the outlier. He was f too far afield. I mean, right. he got some support during the primary process, but he was considered <laughs> a radical, I mean, way out there. Uh, and then eventually became the mainstream of the party. And I'm not sure whether it was his ideas or his personality that attracted that conversion of the Republican Party. Trump didn't have that previous legacy, but you could make the same argument that the Republican Party chased or caught up with Trump in the same way they did with Reagan. Chris, would you well, agree? Well, well, the only thing was that, that Reagan wasn't dissimilar in many of his policies to what Republicans thought before. He was sort of more so. He was... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, I mean, he was an outsider right? because he came up a different route. Um, so then he, you get to the question, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. as to the why 
that they go, and I know the easy answer is they're afraid of getting primaried, but the first chief of staff that Trump had previous famously put out a document after they lost um, to Obama for a second term where they did a post and They said, listen, we can't just be angry white guys. You know, the, the, the demographics of this country is changing. It's too small. Now, Trump threaded the needle somehow, some way, the hatred of Hillary and all the rest that played into it. But Trump still lost the popular vote by more than four million votes. And every metric there is says this is not the right way to have a, now, I, to I have a party. I love the word and, every metric because, I mean, the guy, if I had told one or two of the things that he said that were simply untrue, I would be out of office. And, and he said so many, like 10,000 plus now they've documented, that, that uh, somehow he gets through it. I, I, guess, I guess really what I have to say is I, I'm trying to figure this out like everyone else. I have family members who like Trump. And I, we don't get in discussions, but they like Trump. And, and sometime I got to delve into, okay, why? Really, why? And I, you know, it's just almost an impossible question to answer because it is absurd. Why, why would, why would a, a sitting congressman who made one or two remarks about Trump be out of office? That's the other question that I have. Is it that, that Republican voters aren't the Republican well, was, Party anymore? Well, it's Z changed? Sanford said one or two critical things Mark Sanford, Sanford South Carolina. and and uh, and just before a week before Trump jumps in and knocks him off, and knocks him out. So the answer is he has a keen ability to defeat Republicans in primaries. Mm. I mean Lindsey Graham is a great example. Lindsey Graham has done a 180 flip. Unrecognizable. He's, well, it, because he's up for re-election, and in his state, if he's not for Trump, he's dead. Which is like the previous, you know, uh, senator in Arizona. What a good guy he was. And, you know, in the end, he didn't even bother to run. Well, you know, Joe Biden said something uh, a few days ago, and he got some heat for it because he said, listen, um, he, obviously, he spent a lifetime on the Hill. He said, when Trump goes, um, there will be a reawakening of the oh, old Republican will. Party. There will be. There will be. But, but shame on us. Do you think so? Because before yeah. Trump got in there, the, the Tea Party, well, you know better than anybody, they took over the place. Yeah. But remember, when Ob when Ob President, when Senator Obama became president, he said this was a new day, and we all felt that he was going to reach out to both sides of the aisle. And then what he did is he connected to his Chicago mafia, and they then just went a you know a democratic route instead of reaching out. Mm. And um, uh, I'm, so I'm, I'm going to push back because if you're okay. talking about health care, they definitely reached out to Republicans. No Republican took their embrace. Yeah, no but, Republican but, joined but, in. But, but slow down a second. That was after he'd been in office a while, and he needed their votes to pass it. And it was going to be, we'll give you this, and we want this. See, I don't think, I, I, I disagree with Biden's take on that. I don't think the, the party comes back from Trump or realizes the error of its ways and all of a sudden softens. They're I mean, not going to I think, I think back to ways. Merrick, like that's why Supreme Court Justice Merrick Garland is so influential these days. I mean, it's, the, the well, party's not, even go the party's not going down You can that even road. go to Bush. <laughs> when, yeah. when Bush... In the last bit of his second term, he tried comprehensive immigration reform. Um, and I thought it was rational. I thought he had a good idea. And he had limited party support. But I, I want to get to, because next segment, I'll go around the world with you. But I want to bring up a quote I saw from David Gergen um, about what he thinks one of the big consequences. Now, Gergen, as you know, served in administrations, both Republican and Democrat alike. If we could bring up that quote. Um, this is what he said in part. In nearly every presidential administration, it's been axiomatic that the country must believe in science and invest generously and wisely in science and technology. When all the fireworks were over in Trump's presidency, historians may look back and conclude that even more important than the Mueller report, the American retreat from global leadership, was Washington's disregard of this history and its consequential neglect of the threat to our planet. And this goes, I think, even beyond global warming. The idea that science and fact are not to be trusted. Okay. I think what I, I, I conclude by the very questions you ask, that in the end, a president can bring out the good in people, he can bring out the bad. He can play to the good like Reagan did and they would come right to him. Or he can play to the bad and, and we have Trump. So I think it's really, I think if Trump had come in and been a Reagan, he would have had all this support. So I just think, I think, you know, and 
legislators are supposed to listen, learn, help, and lead. Same with politicians who are governors and mayors and presidents. And, and listen, learn, help, teach, and lead. This president doesn't teach. He doesn't learn. He gives bad information to people, so they have to kind of sort out bad information, so they give back bad information to their elected officials. But that ground had been getting softer for decades. I mean, Donald Trump didn't invent uh, you know, climate no, but, denial. But Chris, Chris said something I never really put my finger on, and, and honestly, that I think we overestimate or maybe underestimate the power of a president sometimes, oh, right? Because yeah. he's elected. But, but I did an interview earlier today um, that we're going to play with, a, with an author um, who spent the last, I don't know how many years, talking to both survivors people who lost loved ones, all from 9-11, and in a very unsanitized way, told the stories of these yes. people. It, it's such a, honestly, uh, uh, but I was reminded of Bush after 9-11, when it would have been easy to go exactly. after Muslims. He didn't, and it was the best part of this country, not and just it, because of Bush, but I've never been more proud of this country than in the weeks And he was never more after. popular. Right. He's never more. And I just shudder at the thought, God forbid that were to happen here, that the ugliness that maybe is there in more of us than we want to admit, that this president taps into the fears, right. the, the prejudices, the whatever. Do you imagine what would happen if, God forbid, that happened now? And, and I think you're right. A president can tap in to the good and the bad and of people. And he can bring it out. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, all right, when we come back, um, Chris stays with us, and we're going to go, as they say, around the world here. We're going to take a look at the foreign policy of this president and whether or not he's making a lot of bad situations even worse. Stay with us.